Hello everyone, it's Omar from Casual Meeple here and today we are going to have a look at quite interesting card game but also we are going to do something really special by the end of the video so make sure to stay tuned. Now today we are having a look at Halfling Feast, our game by Triple A's Games about competitive eating in which we all take roles of hobbits or should I say halflings trying to eat as much as possible during an eating competition. However, we have to be careful because other players might cheat and our tummy is limited. It's quite a little fun card game which is very easy to play. But let's have a look what's inside before I will tell you how the game plays and before I will summarize everything like usual in my final thoughts. See you in a second and let's have a look inside. Okay, so like usual, let's start by looking what's inside the box. Okay. So now everything that's in the box is already here. We've got our game rules, which are quite short and easy to read. We've got our cards with the dishes. We've got our, sorry, these are the cards with the dishes. These are the action cards and cheating cards and so on. We've got our tokens, which we use to track how full we are. We've got six character cards with their special skills over here and the fullness track, which is their tummy. And over here we've got two cards that kind of give us the overview of the turn sequence. So that's about what we get in the box. Let's have a look how the game plays. Okay, so over here we've got example set up for two players. We have two characters, in this case Milo Grub and Hamfast Two Foot. We have the dishes set up and everything is ready to go for the game. Okay, so let me quickly explain. Over here we have all the dishes cards which we lay four of in front of us. Now you will notice that each card has a value over here. This has two purposes. For once, if I decide to eat that, this is on how much points I need to move my fullness track. Basically how much space it takes in my stomach. On the other hand, by the end of the game, this is also the points value that the dish gives to me. And as you can guess, whoever has the most point means they ate the most, therefore they won the competition. There are a few ways in we can change how full we are or how full the dishes will make us but this, that's when the cards like that come in. These are different cards and we have cheating, condiments, we've got special cards and so on and so forth and these are action cards which allow us to do certain things. For example, Potion of Devouring allows us to take any dish from those which we can see but do not move our full track at all. So, for example, I could take Mighty Game Pie, which is worth 9 points and should fill in my tummy with 9 spaces. But if I use this, it comes completely free. So you can see that there are ways we can do it. Now, you will also notice that when you look at character cards, we have the name, we have our fullness track, and we have also extended space. There are cards, basically spells, which allow us to expand our stomach. But in a standard game, we start with 10 and only with magic or items we can expand it to 11 or 12. On the other hand, we also have the skills. Now the first skill is one of the actions we can take each turn. So for example, Milo Grab can release three spaces instead of standard two. Hamfast two foot can look through the cards and take two and choose one he wants and put the other one back. So each character has a slightly different playstyle. But now how the game actually plays? Basically, each turn a person can do one of four actions. One of the things we can do, let's start with Milo Grab, is to choose a dish and eat it. Basically, I take the card, put it here, I move my fullness track to the amount of points. In this case, because this is 9, I move my fullness track to 9 and straight away replace the dish eaten. Simple. Second thing I can do is use the cards I have in my hand and play them on. For example, over here we have a spell of expansion. So instead of eating, Hamfast Two Foot could play that card and expand the tummy, meaning that now, instead of taking any other action, he used the red card and expanded his stomach from 10 to 11 maximum. Quite simple. Third action we can do is basically rest. If we are unable to eat anything, the best course of action might be to rest. And what does this do is we move our track value two spaces. So normally I would go from nine to seven, but this is when the fourth action comes in. 
you will notice that each of the characters has two skills. Now, in each case, I can either use one of them. First skill I can use comes completely free and is just my action. However, if I wanted to use my second one, I need to discard one of my action cards at, as an additional cost. In this case, however, as a Milo grab, what I want to do is just rest. Now, I can rest for two, but that wouldn't make much sense in his case because his special ability is that he releases three belly spaces, which means from nine, we go all the way to six. And then again, Hamfast Two Foot would have another turn. Let's say in this case, he wants to do the last available action for each player, which is take new action card. So as you can see, each player will go one by one and move turn, 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 turn. And each player is allowed to do one of the five available actions. And basically that's how the game plays. As we go through, we go through the dishes and they disappear, disappear. By the time the last dish is eaten and there is nothing left on our table, all of that is gone in player's hand, the game ends and we count all the different points. Now there are some action cards that will give you bonus points, like for example, Borado Bamboo's Brandy Cream, where I can use a sweet dish because the dishes are divided into sweet and savory. I can eat a sweet dish, make it fill my tummy by two more spaces, but also it will provide me with two extra points by the end of the game. So you can see that the cards are quite useful. There are some ways which are cheating and they will affect other players. There are some cards that will give us bonuses or there are some cards that will make it easier for us to eat more things. And that's about it. The game, as you can see, is really simple, but it's really fun to play. And once you play the game once, even though the box says that it's about half an hour to play it, I would say we can finish the game much quicker. In about 15, 20 minutes, you should be able to have a quick game of Halfling Feast. So now, Let's have a look at components a bit closer to have a look if they are of good quality Okay, or last not. thing I want to do before we go and have a look at the quality of the game itself is to give you a bit about the theme of the game. Now, we've got a lot of action cards and you see that the game isn't really serious because in the end it's all about eating, but it's quite comedic in its tone where we have cards like Little Trump, which gives us six belly spaces, um, cards like Satisfactory Burp, which gives us four, a mighty fart, which releases eight. And finally, off to the outhouse, when you sneak quickly to drop few things in the outhouse itself, giving you 10 belly spaces. So you can see that the theme is quite comedic. So you might have a laugh or two when you're saying, what I'm doing now is having a mighty fart and getting a bit of space in the tummy, which is quite fun to play. And I guess kids will love it. I know it gives me a chuckle every time I do it. So. I think you'll enjoy it too. Now let's have a look okay, at the Okay, so quality. now we can see that we've got all the stuff over here. What about quality? Well, the planchettes are quite good, thick cardboard. They don't seem to be getting much damage. However, you can see that on the corners, it slowly starts sticking out, so we can see some of it. However, the game I've played, I wouldn't say too much, but I wouldn't say that it was just sitting on my shelf. I did play it quite a lot. Now, when it comes to cards, they are nice linen finish, which is quite good, as you can see. However, you can also see that on the corners, we can already see it's sticking off. Now, that's normal, but you know, in the end, I bought the game for £10. I don't expect miracles. I wouldn't expect much more than that. But like I said, it's a nice game. It's an interesting game if you get it cheap. If you get it for the full price, it might not be the case like of getting a game and being really happy with the purchase. You might want to consider whether it's worth the money uh, you want to invest in it. We've got six different characters, which we've got described over here with a very short um, outline of who they are and description of the skills. And we can see the booklet is quite simple and teaches us how to play the game really well. Now, I don't think that Triple O's game is that famous because I haven't had much of them, but I've got to admit that this is a nice game. And quality wise, the only issue is the cards. So what I would say is if you play it, be gentle with them if you want to make the game survive a bit longer. But that's about it on the components themselves. Um, let's move on to the final thoughts. See you in a second. All right, so what I think about Halfling Feast. Um, I think it's a quite a nice game. I'm not gonna say it's a groundbreaking game. The mechanics are simple. The theme is quite fun. And like I said, while the game is quite simple, I don't think it's a bad thing. 
It's quite a good entry game to get someone into it. It's quite good as a time filler because the game plays relatively quickly. Um, let's say you are meeting with your group and you have for some of half of the people are there. You are still waiting for the rest to start your game of the night. That would be a perfect filler over there which you can play really quickly, have some fun and finish pretty much before you go into another game. Well, I think that the game is nice. However, I have to admit that the cards are of okay quality. I'm not going to say they are bad. By no means, they are decent. But having the game for about a year, I can already see some wear and tear here and there. Um, the tokens themselves are fine and the planchettes, the cards with the names and skills are fine. I love the mechanic of your space in your tummy. Um, it's quite simple, but really fun mechanic. Um, you have some variety of characters, um, which is quite nice. However, you can see that some characters are certainly better than others. Um, for example, I would never choose the chef character because his skills are quite useless if you compare them to others. While, for example, Milo Grub, the really chubby hobbit over there, is definitely far better being able to get extra space when he's resting. So we can see that not all the cards are the same and not all the characters are the same. But on the other hand, that's not supposed to be a competitive, perfectly balanced game. It's supposed to be a quick card game which we can play with kids, we can play with people who are not into games, and it does that job really, really well. Um, I got the game for about a tenner on Expo last year, yeah, last year, which was perfectly fine. However, I've seen that online it goes for about £20, um, even though originally it's about $25. Would I give £20 for the game? No. I don't think it would be worth that money. For a tenner though, that's a steal. So if you ever have a chance to grab Halfling Feast cheap, I would say go for it and most likely you will enjoy the game and you will have some fun with it. It's not an amazing game, it's not a groundbreaking one, but it's definitely a fun to play game, so go for it. So now we know everything about Halfling okay, Feast. Okay, so now that we covered Halfling Feast, let's move on to the second special part of our video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are having first ever giveaway on our Casual Meeple channel. When we reach 100 subscribers, we will be giving away a copy of Sushi Go. For those of you unfamiliar with the game, I would recommend to go to other videos in our channel and have a look, because we did make a full review of the game explaining why the game is quite nice and how the game plays. So if you are the lucky winner, you will be able to play straight from the box. On the other hand, for those of you who know the game but don't own it yet, why not have a try and give yourself a chance to win? All you have to do is just like this video, leave a comment why you should win the game and why perhaps you will enjoy it the most from all the people who are subscribed to our channel and of course subscribe to our channel. That's quite clear, isn't it? In the end we are trying to reach 100. Now we are on 76, so we are almost there. Make sure to share it and the sooner we reach, the sooner you might be a winner of Sushi Go. Now, with all of that, I think it's enough to get you going. So thanks a lot for watching this week. Make sure to come back next week for more board game reviews and make sure to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to give yourself a chance to win Sushi Go. Thanks for watching and take care.